Hello everyone, I am uh, happy to invite you to this uh, series of lectures on uh, first level engineering thermodynamics course. Uh, the second level course is usually an applied thermodynamics uh, course. This is the uh, first level uh, thermodynamics course and um, the primary uh, learning objectives in this uh, course are to learn the first and the second laws of thermodynamics and their application uh, to um, uh, equipment and devices uh, relevant to mechanical engineering. So, basically we are talking about equipments like um, uh, compressor, turbine, uh, pump, heat exchanger and so on. So, we will learn uh, how to apply the first law um, uh, to such devices, carry out an analysis and uh, also use concepts from second law to evaluate certain things. So, at the end of the course, um, uh, you should actually be able to uh, carry out an uh, analysis uh, of um, uh, any device. So, given any device, you should be able to carry out an analysis of the device, a thermodynamic analysis of the device in terms of energy changes uh, relating the heat interaction of the device with the um, work interaction of the device and also calculate um, uh, entropy changes of the, um, uh, of the working substance uh, inside the device and also calculate entropy changes or entropy generation in the universe as a result of the operation of the device that is the uh, uh, learning outcome from this course. I have actually assumed very little in terms of uh, prior knowledge uh, except to, uh, to assume that all of you um, would have uh, probably had an introduction to thermodynamics uh, perhaps in your 12th grade in your physics course and are familiar with the terms like you know pressure, temperature, volume, ideal gas and so on and so forth. We will anyway explore some of these things in greater detail as we go along. So, the outline of the course is as uh, follows, we start with an introduction and uh, we discuss two important concepts in the uh, in this module uh, which are the macroscopic approach and the continuum hypothesis. Um, thermodynamics uh, can be uh, uh, learnt or understood in uh, using two different approaches. One is the so called microscopic approach which involves the kinetic theory of gases and the second one is the macroscopic approach and that is the approach that we are going to follow in engineering thermodynamics. Okay. So, we will um, uh, sort of um, uh, try to uh, bring out um, what we mean by macroscopic approach and um, uh, when it is applicable. Now, continuum hypothesis actually uh, underlies the macroscopic approach. So, for the macroscopic approach to be valid, continuum must exist and we will uh, discuss what the continuum hypothesis is and under what conditions uh, can we use the macroscopic approach and when we should abandon it and move on to a microscopic approach. In the um, uh, uh, second module, we discuss uh, certain basic concepts uh, such as uh, uh, system, control volume, uh, property and state of a system, uh, process undergone by a system and we close the module with the uh, discussion on temperature and its uh, measurement. Okay. Now, uh, these concepts uh, system control volume, property and state may uh, uh, are probably familiar to you and they, they may uh, seem somewhat simplistic, okay. but uh, what uh, we will try to highlight during this uh, course is that you know there are many subtle aspects involved in these uh, concepts and we will try to illustrate these subtleties through uh, many uh, examples. You may be familiar with them. But uh, you are probably familiar with them in a somewhat superficial manner and we will try to bring out subtle aspects of all these concepts through uh, different examples. Um, in particular, temperature and its measurement, we have uh, note that we have uh, sort of uh, mentioned only temperature among the more familiar properties, you know. We have pressure, we have, temp we have temperature, we have volume, we have many other properties. But we have chosen to highlight temperature because temperature, although it seems familiar and is used quite uh, widely in everyday use, it is an extremely subtle concept in uh, thermodynamics and we need to take a closer look at it. And we also look at a measurement of temperature. There are some fundamental issues related to measurement of temperature which we will highlight 
and um, uh, and discuss temperature in that context. Okay. Uh, so, that is why we have uh, we have identified the temperature alone as a property uh, to be discussed further and not pressure, volume and so on. Okay. Now, in the third module, we discuss work and heat. So, we first start with uh, a thermodynamic definition of work. You are probably familiar with the definition of work in mechanics. Okay. It is basically force times distance moved by uh, a particle in the direction of the applied force. In thermodynamics, uh, this uh, definition of work is uh, not at all sufficient. Uh, it needs to be much broader than this. So, we will discuss the notion of work in thermodynamics and we will also look at different forms of work and how to calculate different forms of work in practical applications. Okay. Then we move on to heat uh, interaction or heat interaction of a system with the surroundings. So, we may be supplying uh, heat uh, to the system or we supply heat to an engine or we may be removing uh, heat from a system uh, like what we do in a, in a refrigerator. So, in so far as heat is concerned, we do not really take a, a closer look at uh, anything connected to it except to say that either we supply or remove so much heat from the system to the system or from the system. So, basically in a given problem, you would either be given the amount of heat that is uh, supplied to a system or the amount of heat that is removed from the system or you may be asked given other quantities, you may be asked to calculate uh, the heat interaction of the system with the surroundings. We do not really uh, look at the heat in any more detail than that in contrast to work. Work we are uh, you know we look at work in a much more um, uh, detailed manner, but uh, not so much for heat. Then in the next module, we move on to first law of thermodynamics for a system where we connect the uh, work and the heat to the change in property of a system. Okay. And uh, this discussion will bring out uh, the fact that a new property may be identified uh, for a system, namely total energy of a system. Just like pressure, temperature, volume and so on, the total energy of a system is also a property. Okay, so, that is what will come out of uh, this module. Uh, in the next module, we look at uh, a framework uh, named uh, pure substances. Okay, basically, um, uh, this module we have related uh, the work interaction of a system, heat interaction of a system with the changes in properties of the system. So, we need to have uh, a framework by which we can calculate changes in properties of a system. Okay. So, that is discussed in, uh, in the fifth module. So, the type of working substances that we have in engineering thermodynamics in particular mechanical engineering uh, thermodynamics are uh, of uh, two kinds. One is ideal gases. Note that a mixture of ideal gases may itself be treated as an ideal gas uh, after taking care of the fact that it is uh, composed of different components. So, we have ideal gases and we have two phase mixtures in mechanical engineering. Under the category of two phase mixture, we encounter uh, the uh, water steam uh, working substance which is used in many applications in uh, mechanical engineering like for instance the thermal power plant. And uh, we also have uh, two phase mixtures of uh, refrigerant in refrigeration application. So, liquid refrigerant plus vapor mixture is also encountered as a working substance in refrigeration applications. So, these three substances cover almost all the uh, working substances that you are likely to encounter in mechanical engineering, namely ideal gases and two phase mixtures of water and water vapor and two phase mixture of uh, uh, liquid refrigerant and its vapor. So, now that we know how to calculate changes in property of a system, so we move on to uh, first law analysis of systems where uh, we have for many different applications, we actually calculate uh, the work interaction given other changes in properties of the system and heat interaction or uh, any two of the three quantities being given, we try to calculate the, th uh, the third quantity. The two quantities being work, heat and uh, changes in properties of a system. So, we uh, look at uh, many examples in this module and uh, try to apply uh, first law to these uh, examples and uh, carry out an analysis. 
in the next module we actually derive a form of uh, uh, thermodynamics for uh, a control volume. This is actually not a um, uh, different law from what we have already derived for a system. It is the same law but applied uh, to specific applications. So, the sort of applications that we have in mind are those where there is continuous inflow and outflow of mass or inflow of mass but not outflow of mass and so on. For instance, let us say that we have a compressor which uh, takes in air, atmospheric air, uh, compresses it to a certain pressure and then sends it out to a, let us say a receiver or a tank. Okay. So, if we isolate the compressor, it is receiving a certain amount of air and absorbing a certain amount of power and sending out a certain same amount of air at a higher pressure. It may be running hot, so it also exchanges heat with the surroundings. So, for this type of a situation, we can actually simplify the form of first law that we derived for a system and directly apply it to this device. So, it is a it is a very specialized form of the fir of uh, first law for a system. So, we identify a control volume which is usually the device itself as we will see later and apply first law directly to this. So, that uh, given the power input and perhaps the heat loss to the surroundings, we can calculate the pressure with which the air will come out or the pressure rise that can be accompanied uh, that can be accomplished by the compressor. So, uh, such devices are called steady flow devices. And because it operates at a steady state, uh, say 1 kg per second of air comes in, 1 kg of uh, per second of air goes out, the device is warmed up, its uh, temperature is no longer changing, it is operating at a constant temperature. So, such a device is called a steady flow device and we will use a control volume for analyzing this device. Now, unsteady analysis is required when there is no steady inflow and outflow of uh, mass. For instance, in, in this example, we said that the compressor uh, compresses the air and then sends it to a reservoir. So, if I want to analyze the, uh, the reservoir, carry out a thermodynamic analysis of the reservoir, uh, note that the reservoir continuously receives air but nothing leaves. So, it is operating uh, in, a, in an unsteady state. So, we may want to know what the uh, final pressure of the air will be after some time in the reservoir. So, this means that the pressure of the air in the, uh, in the reservoir keeps changing with time and we want to determine what this pressure is. So, that calls for an unsteady analysis. Again, we will use <coughs> the first law that we derived earlier but apply it to a control volume which is the reservoir itself and uh, carry out the analysis and uh, obtain the quantities that are of interest. So, that would be an unsteady analysis. In the next module, we look at second law of thermodynamics. The first thing is we need to motivate why we need another law, what is uh, what is deficient or what is missing or what is it that we cannot do with the first law is the first question that arises in our minds. Why do we need another law? Okay? So, that is discussed uh, in the first um, uh, uh, in the initial part in this module. Then we define formally what heat engines are, uh, both direct engines as well as reverse engines. Direct engines are ones produce power. Reverse engines are ones that absorb power, but do something useful for you like for instance, a domestic refrigerator or an air conditioner and so on. Okay. And we define appropriate performance metrics for these devices, the direct ones and the reverse ones. Then we look at a couple of different statements of second law, namely the Kelvin-Planck statement and the Clausius statement. And this naturally leads to the notion of reversible processes. And, uh, and the Carnot engine. As you probably know already, the Carnot engine is uh, a power producing device which is composed entirely of reversible processes. So, we are naturally led to uh, the reversible uh, notion of a reversible process and the Carnot engine. And we then uh, tie this up with the thermodynamic scale of temperature, where we uh, look at uh, or revisit some of the issues that we raised earlier with the temperature and its measurement and then uh, tie it up with uh, uh, the uh, Corno engine and then define a scale which is independent of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the working substance. Okay? So, we will deal with this in greater detail. The next module discusses entropy. So, just like the uh, development of the first law led to the identification of a new property of a system, namely the total energy, the discussion of uh, second law naturally leads to the definition of a new property of the system which is entropy. Okay. So, we discuss Clausius inequality first and this uh, allows us to define uh, entropy as a property of the system. Then we uh, look at how to calculate entropy change of a system. 
Unlike microscopic thermodynamics, in macroscopic thermodynamics, we never actually evaluate entropy of a system. We only evaluate entropy changes of a system. Okay. It is very important to keep that in mind. In engineering thermodynamics, entropy itself is never calculated, only entropy changes are calculated. And um, we will, uh, we, there are a couple of different ways in which entropy change of a system may be evaluated. We will look at both those either using tedious relations or given the heat interaction of a system, we can calculate entropy changes, uh, entropy change of a system. The last topic uh, of this module is the principle of increase of entropy, which is an extremely important universal principle. Okay? Most of you are probably familiar with it already. Uh, the principle of increase of entropy states that the entropy of the universe uh, remains a constant as a result of any thermodynamic process or uh, increases with time. So, it remains a constant at best and usually increases with time. Any human endeavor generally uh, results in uh, this type of a change in the universe. Uh, the, the best endeavor leaves the entropy of the universe and changed, but most endeavors increase the entropy of the universe. So, that is called the principle of increase of entropy. We will explore this in greater detail. Okay. So, you may recall that this was one of the things that uh, uh, that was uh, mentioned in, as a learning objective and also in the learning outcome. So, when you do thermodynamic analysis of a device, not only do you evaluate its uh, work input or power output or change in uh, property of uh, the working substance or the efficiency. <coughs> you are also uh, expected to comment on how much the entropy of the universe changes as a result of operation of this device. That is a very important thing to calculate and also understand so that you can try to minimize the entropy increase uh, that uh, the device contributes to the, uh, to the universe. Okay. The last module in the course deals with a um, um, special uh, set of processes namely cyclic processes. Here we look at uh, two power producing cycles namely Rankine cycle which is uh, the nothing but the steam power plant and the Brayton cycle which is nothing but a gas turbine power plant. So, the Rankine cycle uses uh, uh, water as the working substance water plus uh, water vapor and the Brayton cycle uses air as the working substance both of these both of these are power producing cycles. The uh, last topic is on vapor compression refrigeration cycle. As you know, the domestic refrigerator takes in electric power and uh, maintains uh, the refrigerator compartment at a low temperature. So, we discuss uh, the vapor compression refrigeration cycle in uh, detail in this, uh, in this last topic. We calculate the uh, performance metric uh, coefficient of performance of the device and we also look at any um, uh, changes in entropy in the universe as a result of operation of the vapor compression refrigeration cycle. So, this is the uh, broad outline of the uh, topics that we will uh, discuss in this course. I will be teaching primarily out of um, uh, my textbook which is uh, Fundamentals of Engineering Thermodynamics. The second edition of the textbook is what I will be using. This is published by ANE Books uh, India. Uh, but you are free to uh, read from any uh, uh, textbook uh, that you are comfortable with. It is not necessary that you should uh, read only from this book. Uh, the uh, material uh, and the lectures are self-contained. So, uh, it would um, uh, it should help you um, uh, read any textbook or understand from any uh, textbook of your liking. But the worked examples are all taken, worked examples, illustrations and everything is taken from this uh, particular textbook of mine.